All Sunday's snow is great for winter sports, of course, like skiing and snowboarding. And meteorologist Karen Swanson has been snowboarding, but <laughs> not the way you might think. Right. Hello again. Hi there. Well, this is a snowboard, and yeah. this is what I use. So not your typical kind of snowboard. Uh, this one actually involves taking snowfall measurements, and we're taking a slightly different twist on your typical snow measurements. Besides using this snowboard, we've got a measuring wheel, a yardstick, a scale, a sample, a cutter, and also some hot chocolate is required. And just roll this right along. What happens after the snow falls? Well, there is usually some shoveling to be done. The kind of snow we receive will determine just how big that shoveling job will be. All the way to the end of my driveway, it is 55. But we all know that the snow plow eventually comes by and then we have to shovel out about halfway into the street. Here we go out. Looks like about to 70 feet right here. So now that we've measured the length, we have to do the width too. So when we multiply that out, 1,190 feet, square feet, that I have to shovel. Ugh. Next, we need to put our snowboard out in an open area away from buildings and trees that could affect our snowfall sample. It's also important to mark the board's location so we can find it later. Now we wait and enjoy that hot chocolate. So we marked our snowboard with this little orange stick. And what we're gonna do first is just take a snow depth measurement right on top of that snowboard. Did you hear it hit? Looks pretty close to 4.3 on average. I've got this snow cutter, we'll call it. It's a six inch square box. Now that the snow has fallen, we want to take our sample and weigh it to see just what kind of snowfall we're dealing with. Our sampler cutter weighs one pound, two ounces. So we'll subtract that from the weight of the cutter and the snow. I've got a kitchen scale here and I'm just gonna weigh my cutter box with the snow inside and we're gonna find out the total weight of that six inch square amount of snow. One pound, nine and a half ounces. The snow weighs seven and a half ounces. Our sampler is six inches square, so we'll multiply seven and a half ounces by four to get our square foot number. That gives us 30 ounces of snow per square foot. And that number times 1,190 square feet for my driveway means I'll need to move 35,700 ounces of snow, which is the same as 2,231 pounds of snow. The snow weight, of course, can vary greatly from snowstorm to snowstorm. It can range from fluffy snow, which can have a snow to liquid ratio of 20 to one or more, to the heavy backbreakers, which can have a ratio of eight to one or less. It all depends on temperatures, both aloft and at the ground, as well as the moisture content. My friend here just moved 1,800 pounds of snow. And that's why that hot chocolate is important. Extra energy. So we'll be taking these measurements of snow weight throughout the winter and passing them along. And then you can brag about the great workout you had that day. But of course, you do need to be careful as this can be strenuous work. And while this is our version of taking a weight measurement of the snowfall, the National Weather Service takes their snow measurements in inches. And we're going to be visiting them next time to see how they record the official snow totals. Did you get all that math? <laughs> I know. I was, my brains were starting to drip out of my That's ears. That's had to work today. Gary couldn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> right. I had well, smoke coming out of my calculator. And, and it, you know, we'll get those wet snowfalls, and those make a big difference. Those can be backbreaking. So, yeah, a lot of weight with those. Yeah, this That's one wasn't too bad. Very interesting. Really, really interesting. Fun. I like the snowboard idea. So you can you can even do that with your kids. Absolutely, mm -hmm. right. That's a good idea. Good All right, thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. We'll be right back.